Hey guys, Danny Williamson, Integrated Family Medicine, and I have got my buddies here, Allie and Janice, right here. And we, Janice, I saw her last week, and we were talking about sex drive. And tonight, we're talking, today, we're talking about sex, sex drive, love, wife, marriage, children, all the things that go with it, right? All the counseling we wish we would have gotten once before we got married and then after you got married, right? The premarital counseling, like we were talking about, is great stuff, but it's once you get married and life starts getting in the way and the kids start getting born and all that, when things start to um, struggle in a marriage. And what I'm seeing, I was telling Janice this, what I see in this office is I have young women, 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way on up, who I'll say, how's your sex drive? And they said, well, I don't have a sex drive. Non-existent is the word that I hear. Every day, all day, non-existent. These are married women, right, with kids or without kids. And I'm like, well, I guarantee your husband's is probably not non-existent. What are you going to do about that? And she says, well, I don't, they say, I don't care if I ever have sex again. And that's usually not the case for a man. Am I right? Right. Right? Yes. And yes. so Janice and I were talking about this. And Janice is going to share a little bit of her story as well. Um, so, you know, I always tell patients, well, guaranteed there's somebody willing to give him what you're not giving him. Am I right? Simple yes. as that. Yes. It could be somebody at work. It could be somebody somewhere else. Who knows? And then girls get all ex upset about that. Well, and some say, well, I don't care. Well, trust me, you do care. You do care. <laughs> yes, you, um, you care until you know. Until you know. You don't care until you know that, oh my goodness, somebody's giving him what I'm not giving him. So that's what we're going to talk about today is really the basic common sense of what's normal and what, man, what you should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's different for everyone. Janice, tell me her story. I mean, tell them how many kids you have. All right. I have nine children and... Four are grown and out of the house. Three of those are married. So I have two grandchildren, two grandchildren on the way, and then five still living at home. Oh my goodness. Talk about this. And she has a good libido. Yes, my husband and I, lucky girl. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. So she's one of the unusual ones, and she has nine children. None of them were twins, by the way, either. And five are still living at home because I always hear, oh, I can't, I don't want to do it because the kids may knock on the door, you know, and things like that. And there's kids. And so tell us, talk about this stuff. What, 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 how do you keep it alive over there? What do you wish you'd known? Well, um, my mom and other older ladies always told me, told me when we got married, first of all, never tell your husband no because that's really important to them. And it's the number one thing you can do to show them that you love them. We talked about that last time. And, um, I mean, most of your um, time with your husband, you need to maybe talk a little bit before you go to bed, and then usually you're going to have sex right before you go to sleep at night, because that's the time all the kids are asleep. That's right. And nobody's gonna bother you. <laughs> right. That's right. That is a fact, and that is usually when people, but I also have a lot of people who say, I don't like sex at night. I'm too exhausted at night. I want sex in the morning. I'm a morning person. Well, then have sex in the morning. There's no rule that you have to have sex mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock at night when everyone goes to bed. Right. You can have sex uh, right now, 12.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> well, that's what they call <laughs> afternoon delight. And let me tell you something. If you text your husband and say, come home and take your pants off, I'm ready right now. He's going to be home before, well, he's probably home anyway during COVID right now. But am I right? You don't have to have sex at night when right. you go to bed. Or you can so, and you can always like get up, give the kids a little something to eat, put them in front of their favorite Disney movie. That's right. And then go lock the door to your room. That's right. And there's nothing wrong with locking your kids out of your room. Right? Am right. I right about that? There is nothing wrong. They with that. need to know that mom and dad need time together. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah, what would you say? Definitely. Turn the fan on? What would you say? Yeah, yeah, turn the fan on. <laughs> <laughs> Have lots of fans in your house. You can turn the fan on in the room the kids are in. 
the fan on in the room you're in. Good idea. This is brilliant. Yes. And you can also sneak around. You can go get in the shower with him, right? You can go get in the closet. You said, meet me in the closet. I have a patient who's had a whole lot of sex in the closet. And and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can you can go to the truck. You can do whatever it is. But you're right. So the big key there, if you guys missed that or if you rolled your eyes when she said, don't tell your husband no. Well, I have a patient there in their 70s, and he told me, he said, she has never once denied me, never one time. They have two kids, and never once said no to me, and that's huge for their marriage. And they, they're still in their 70s, they're in their 70s, still having great sex. But she said she never told him no. I'm guilty, I'm the only divorced one here, so I am guilty of having said no. You know, I said no, but nobody ever told me don't say no. No, but I never heard that in my life. So I've said no plenty of times when I was exhausted or had a terrible headache or whatever. You know, how could you think about that when you don't feel well? But I say yes way more than I say no. So, you know, it's, I, and I really didn't realize the importance of this aspect of our marriage until after an affair happened in my own marriage. And I read the book about the love languages. If y'all haven't read that, the five love languages, yeah. it was absolutely very changing for us because it was, I, we'd been married, I don't know, 13, 14 years, and all the time I loved him, and all the time I thought he knew that, and he, I wasn't speaking his language, essentially. <clears throat> so then after I read that, and I realized what his love languages were, so for Bart, it's touch and words of affirmation, I have made it a point and a mission every day of my life, even if, if we don't make love, just touch the man, mm -hmm. hold his hand, touch his leg, make sure he feels my hand on him. We always hug before we go to sleep. And then words of affirmation are really huge for him. And that's a little harder for me because I'm real nuts and bolts and say, you know, I just, that's how I am. So it, it's a little, I have to come up with that. I mean, that's a little bit of work, but it's definitely worth the work. Well, you gave him 14 years of you, probably your love language, mm -hmm. which wasn't his. True that. Mm -hmm. And had no clue. Most men are touch and words of affirmation, by the way. Now, some are yes. quality time and some are gifts and what is it? And then it's, um, uh, uh, my, my number one love language is acts of service. Mm -hmm. Probably from being a single mom for 18 years and boy, you do anything for me and I'm like a little puppy dog. I love it. But most are touch and words of affirmation. Men are. And if you're not giving them that, I mean, if you don't, I can't tell you how many people tell me they don't touch their spouse. They don't touch their spouse. They barely even talk. They don't do anything but raise their kids. Let me tell you something. You were a couple long before you were, or maybe not long before, but you were a couple before you were a parent. Yes. Or a, 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 you definitely were. And those children, it is your God, your spouse, and your children in that order. And those children don't sit between you and the couch. If this is mom and dad right here, those children aren't between you. They're not between you in the bed at night. What? You and your husband can be in the bed together at night. If the kids want to be in there, they can be on the bookends. Or they can be at the foot of the bed. I had a therapist tell a friend of mine this. She said, I saw your kids sitting between you at church. And she said, that's wrong. Your kids don't sit between you. Your kids never see mom and dad separated, ever. Mm -hmm. They're the bookends. They aren't here. You all are the mm -hmm. solid part. That was amazing that was advice to me. Thank you know, you. laying on the couch. They're not laying between you all on the couch. Mom and dad are together on the couch. I mean, what a great visual for kids mm -hmm. to grow up seeing. Yeah, absolutely. And knowing that they're not top dog. Well, and the thing is, is that you wouldn't have a family if you didn't have your husband. And he was your first family. Like when you marry your husband, you say those vows and you're leaving your parents and you become one and he's essentially you and you're essentially him and he has to be first priority, always, always. That's not easy to, to do every day, but if you always choose to make that your priority person, it, it's very doable, but you just have to choose that and remember that he came first. He is your first family member, and you, you have to do whatever you can to honor him and to love him the way he needs to be loved. And, you know, for most men, like you just said, it's touch. And if, 
if the wife, if the mom, the wife respects her husband, the kids are going to respect him. Yes. And yes. And are going to sh are going to show him the respect he deserves. Because my husband works very hard. He provides for our family. He's always there if anything goes wrong. He's always thinking about how he can do better for our family. And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So I tell a lot of people, you need to think of three things that you're thankful for about your husband every day, and then tell him that, even if it's just a text mm -hmm. with a heart at the end of it. You bet. When's the last time that you texted your husband and said, I'm crazy about you, thank you so much for loving our family well? When's the last time? I had a lady yesterday, she said, you know, he sends me text messages all the time like that and I'll just send a thumbs up or something she said I really don't give him I said he's telling you what he wants right there mm -hmm. listen it's like those little it's like the things that happen in your body right your head aches or your your arm hurts or whatever those are little red flags in your body telling you pay attention right you talked about this last night that you tell Bart all the time you make an effort to tell him how proud you yeah. are of how hard he works. Thank you for working so hard to take care of our family. That is a mm -hmm. almost every single day, if not every day, every week. I, I say that I have been doing that for years and years because I did realize I stayed home. We have four kids. We had four kids in four years. It was a complete shit show but um, <laughs> we all survived i killed none of them they killed they didn't kill us we we're all okay but um it was a crazy crazy exhausting time but i realized that i was blessed to have a husband who was willing to go to work mm -hmm. and work his tail off every day so i could raise these children because we wanted them to know their mom we didn't want to you know drop them off somewhere if we could you know, keep from doing that. And I was blessed to be able to only work part-time most of my um, kids growing up. So I, I do appreciate that. I know it's a privilege. But, you know, if you don't ever speak that, they don't realize that you're grateful. And, um, you, you know, gratitude is life-changing. But we all need to hear thank you even for, you know, Bart always says thank you for dinner. Every mm -hmm. night I make dinner. He tells me thank you for dinner. That was delicious, whatever. You know, even if it's terrible and we laugh about how bad it is, he always thanks me for dinner. You know, gratitude is just life-changing, but, um, but you can't just take it for granted because there's a lot of men who wouldn't be willing to do what your guy's doing yeah. for you. You're right, yeah. and there are a lot of women, women out there who would be willing to take him off your hands in a heartbeat. I promise you that, and you have to remember that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to remember that. Yes. You know, I would love to have a husband. I would love to have a husband like Bart or your husband, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I would love that. I mean, and, and so, and I wouldn't take that for granted. Now, I, you know, there was infidelity on their side and there was on my side as well, and it was me. And, 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 it's a, it, and I tell women this, there's somebody willing to give you the attention too at, that you're not getting at home. That works both ways because mm -hmm. I know I'm living proof of that. It was the flip for her. It was that for me. And so, you know, one thing that we talked about, we talked about, and you and I talked about this as well, the woman in the home, even though, te you know, she's not the head of the household, the woman sets the tone for that entire household. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sets the tone for how the children yes. act, how they re respect the, their father. Mm -hmm. Sets the tone for the marriage. The woman sets the tone. Absolutely. And she talks about that in this book. And we've all read this book. This, this is, is if I ever get married again, and it may happen, I don't know, it may or may not. This is what I'm giving. This book I am giving to every single person who comes to the wedding. They're not getting some silly plant flower things or rice or whatever. <laughs> they are getting the proper care and feeding of husbands by Dr. Laura Schlesinger, and she actually needs to come on our Sunday night service. Would that not be something? This book wow. taught me that men are so simple. Men want good food, good sex, and they want to protect you. They are protectors by nature, right? And they don't want to be emasculated when they get in the door, right? Immediately on them, immediately on them, right? I mean, what, yeah, what did you my, take out of this book? This I mean, my mother gave me this book because it's basically all the things my mother told me. Because she said, when your husband comes home from work, don't yes, really talk yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. Let him have like a half an hour mm -hmm. to get, yeah, <laughs> to unwind, yes. to change his clothes, to get back into the mentality like he's at home. Don't tell him all the problems during the day. 
ask him how his day was. Yes. And it's just simple, simple stuff. Common have sense. Have dinner just about ready to put on the table because he's going to be hungry. Yes. And if you're privileged enough to get to stay at home, to, and it's not stay at home because you're working way harder than any of us Mark. who work. I mean, hands down outside of the home. But those are things that have to be made an effort to do, like you said. The and meal, the food is easy. That. Remember, good food, good sex. They love to protect you. I, what I really learned in here too is that yeah, leave them alone when they get home. Leave them, let them go change clothes. Let them go to the bathroom. Let them scroll through Facebook if that's what their thing is. Have them mm -hmm. a drink if they if they drink. You know, get them a coffee, whatever, and just let them kind of decompress. We right. don't get that opportunity. We walk right in. I don't even get my shoes off half the time. I go straight to the laundry because chances are I put it in before I left work. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, it's going to sour because I've washed clothes multiple times that I forgot in there. We go straight to work as soon as we get home. That's true. Men are different. Mm -hmm. Men are different. They don't go for do 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 Yeah. And I didn't have a mom that told me any of that either. So I had to learn that on my own, that he needs a minute. I need a minute. You know, so if you start thinking about what would I like. If I came home mm -hmm. after a busy day, it's all about, y'all, marriage really and truly, it is all about looking out for their best interest. And if both people are looking out for the other's best interest, everybody's going to be happy. Yes. So if you say, what would I like if I just came home from a really hard day, what would I like? Well, I would like a minute to breathe. I would like to change my clothes and be barefooted and take a walk out in the yard look at flowers, whatever, I want. I would want that. And I would also want there to be somebody cooking something for supper. So, you know, you just kind of have to think of it that way. What would bless him? Mm -hmm. You know, we're, bless him. we are yes. to support and encourage. You know, God made men and women different. And we were the helpers, remember? God pulled the rib <laughs> right out of Adam to, to make a helper for him and a supporter. So, really, our role is to be the cheerleader, the supporter, the helper, the, you know, the encourager and, and to be available mm -hmm. uh, emotionally, physically, all those things. And, you know, you can choose not to be, but it hurts you too. You may think, well, yes. he hasn't he hasn't vacuumed. He's never done any laundry. He does, well, you know what? He does a lot of things you don't know. And you've got to get out of that because that didn't go anywhere good. So, yeah, yeah, you said that last night. She said, you know, he does things like keep the lot. He works all day at the hospital, comes home, he keeps the yard mode and all the things that 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 the yeah. cars running <laughs> that's right all the stuff i would never want to do yeah. right and you made something last night you have to make the decision you made that you make a dis you made the decision every day when you went through your trouble to grow through it to grow through it exactly to just grow through it every day and say i love this man yeah you choose that y'all you choose love and every day you wake up and you have a choice I choose to love, I choose to forgive, and for months after, you know, my husband had an affair, I, I literally, multiple times a day, my heart was just hurting, and I would just say, I choose to forgive, I choose to love my husband, you know, God has forgiven him, he was sorry, and he's already asked God for forgiveness, and he is trying to love me well and take care of our family, I have to choose too, so very hard, very humbling, but you know what, our marriage is so much better on the other side of that affair than it ever was before. And it was a good marriage before, but it was nothing like it is now. It really, God, you know, beauty for ashes, he really took something that could have been destructive and made it something really beautiful. So we're, we're very blessed that we made it through that time, but you have to choose every day to love that man. Choose to serve that man, you, it's your choice. And it reflects back on what you get too. You know, what you get, you, you know, what is it? Reap, you reap what you sow, right? Yes, amen. Because it's like the golden rule. You have to treat other people the way you want to be treated. And if you do that, you're, the husband and wife do that with each other, the kids are going to pick up on that and you're going to have a lot less conflict in your family. Yes, yes. And like my husband and I have been married almost 30 years and like, we're now getting grandchildren and the reward mm -hmm. for staying together, staying married is huge. I'm sure you're starting to see 
Yeah, none of our very rewards. thankfully. Yeah. But, oh, we have great rewards. We yeah. had all four of our kids um, at different times in different ways just say thank you. Thank you for sticking it out. Thank you for mucking through because we have seen what love can be. And we, you know, all of them are hoping and determined to find a mate that they'll stay their whole life. That's right. And my folks were divorced. So, yeah, mine too. Um, I did not divorces. have a great, I didn't have a great uh, thing to look at. Neither did but I. But I know that after going through my parents' divorce and some of the other angst that comes along with that, I was so determined to <laughs> be the wife that, the best wife I could be. And to give my children, if I ever was blessed with them, a stable, loving home. I was so determined. I, I really was. I just prayed my head off. God, please, you know, help me to be that kind of mom. Of course, I screwed up plenty. But, you know, um, God did bless me with a man that I am willing to walk my whole life through with. And, uh, and he did bless me with four kids. It was awesome. Once you made, yeah, yeah, four and nine. nine. That's not. I mean, yeah, nine children. Holy, yeah. I didn't have four in four years though. <laughs> and she doesn't. Yeah, there's no twins involved in there. But yeah. um, something else that we talked about. So this book, you're not familiar with this book. No. This is an excellent book. Mm -hmm. Allie's listening to it right now on um, Audible. Right. I think. Yeah. I read this one, and this one um, really explained to me and helped me see. Uh, the attitudes of women, that the attitudes that our culture kind of gives us and feeds us and that we just absorb and we don't even realize, this was super eye-opening for that. Yeah. For me, this one here, and I am not finished with this, um, no one ever talked to me about sex, no one. It was not discussed, I did not see um, affection between my parents in our home, and I went to a Baptist church where, you know, everything was taboo and oh, yeah. you were never allowed to be sexy and sex was dirty and sex was wrong. And of course we knew that when it was you were married, it was okay. But I was telling Danny this last night. <laughs> how do you every it's dirty, it's bad, it's it's illegal, it's evil, it's, it's illegal. all the things. <laughs> it's illegal. And then you Why walk you down the jail. I had sex. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what, well, and then you walk down the aisle and all of a sudden supposed to just be hopping in bed oh, every night and know what to do. I literally had no idea what to do. And I was so freaked out by, bless Bart's heart, the most patient man. I was terrified of this. So this was not, uh, you know, this is not what we did on our honeymoon. I basically slept our honeymoon and he fished. So because I was terrified. But um, oh. it is a thing. I mean, I had to get over that. Nobody told me how to do that. And I so wish that somebody would have said, hey, it's okay. Know. You know, not just it's okay. Here's how to approach right. this. Here's how to think right. about this. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and the closeness that, you can't explain that closeness. There's nothing else that brings that. Mm -hmm. Just that. And that, that was God's intention, I'm sure. But this one right here, what I love about this is she starts out talking about anatomy and nobody told me about any of that. Mm -hmm. And I always thought because I didn't have much of a sex drive that something was wrong with me. That I was broken. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that has caused a lot of pain in me and in my husband because I felt like he got a dysfunctional model, you know? Mm -hmm. And I felt bad for him, but I couldn't turn on any switch. And for years I just kept saying, if only there could just be a switch and you could just flip that baby and, and it would be great. It just, I didn't have that. But this woman who wrote this is a researcher mm -hmm. and she talks so encouraging. I just bawled at the beginning of this book listening. She just says, it's normal. This is normal. You are normal. 99% of women are normal. You're just different. And I wish somebody had said it was normal and it was okay and that I could just, you know, learn to bless him and not worry so much that I didn't have a drive. I was too worried about what's wrong with me yeah. to really be a blessing to him. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure there's other people like that. But Well, there are a whole yeah. lot of people like that. I asked them, did you have a good sex drive before you got married? Nope. A lot of people say that. You know, no, I never did. 
and then have children and it gets even lower and then of course the family start I mean you know the relationship starts to do this I mean I never had that problem and I grew up in a Baptist church too but and I grew up with a mother who never talked at all about sex and she wasn't huggy touchy but I had a father who was extremely open about things and still to this day <laughs> so I got the best of and I kind of go towards that direction the Williamsons they're they're okay with it and um and so I never felt any of that, and I always had a good, good libido. Even going through a bad marriage, I had a good libido. That's something. Well, for him, I was with him too. I mean, I varied out of that as well as we know. But um, you know, it, yeah. So, and you, did you always have a good libido? I think I always did. Once I, I was a late. I went through puberty late. So, but I can remember the day when I thought, hmm, boys are very interesting. <laughs> Cute. Yeah. And, yes, and, um, yeah, and we didn't have children for, like, three years after we got married. So then I was kind of anxious after we had kids because I was wondering what, because I had a really bad delivery with my oldest son. And... So, and you did it eight more times after that? <laughs> Whoa. Right, girl. Girl. But for six months, I could barely sit oh, yeah. uh, uh, upright. And um, I thought, I, how is this going to work? But I had a really good obstetrician. And she was like, well, and sh so talk to your, doc your obstetrician. You because she was like, this is how you can adjust. And my husband was very patient and um, helped. And believe it or not, after about six months, uh, our physical relationship was better mm -hmm. than before. Um, but it, at different stages in your relationship, you have to get help if you need it. And That's right. Patient with you. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Communication is key. Mm -hmm. Many people don't talk about this because they were raised without talking about this and they're ashamed or they're embarrassed or they don't know what to say and you know i tell women every day does he even know what you like what is good for you what turned you on well no because they don't say anything mm -hmm. how in the world That's... could you have sex with someone your husband and never have told him what feels good and i don't I, understand and again, that. that's where an older farming wife in my community she was like oh well, you just tell them when you're having sex, wow, that feels really good. Or, I really like that. Yes. Oh, and, and he's um, going to want to yes. continue. Yes. And you can't lie and, about it because if I'm you're like, lying about it, they're going to continue to doing something you don't like. Yeah, I have a friend who right. actually did that. <laughs> and 13 years idea. into it, she's like, I still don't know what to do. I was like, what is wrong with you? And so she's faked an orgasm for 13 years. <laughs> yes. Don't ever fake an orgasm. Are you crazy? You can't do that. Tell he wants to please you. Just like yeah, he wants right. to please them. And he wants to know. And he can tell the difference. You may think he can't, but they can tell the difference in a real orgasm and a fake orgasm. For <laughs> for sure. But you've got to tell him. So that farm wife knew. Yes. Yeah, and I guess older women just need to be a little more brave. You bet. We need the younger. mentors and yeah, the older we women to step up. up. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, I'm I, I'm not going to be here forever and I tell women every day, what is going on over there? You have got, well, I got flowers in April. I was sitting in here during COVID and um, nobody here, I'm in my room by myself, Allie's over there, Allie comes in, she goes, you need to go outside, there's people waiting in the parking lot for you. <laughs> They've been waiting for 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever, what? So I go outside with my mask on, this guy gets out of the car with this huge bouquet of flowers. And I was like, oh, he's cute as butt. look at him. I didn't know who it was, I didn't know. And then his wife gets out of the car, well, it's my patient, she gets out the other side and I was like, oh, he goes, thank you for turning our marriage around, our sex life around. And I said, what, what did I do? I said, well, what did you do, Lori? And she goes, everything you asked me to do, I did it. Which was text your husband, during the day, all during the day, you know, while you're sitting, laying on the couch with him at night or whatever, or you're in the kitchen and he's in there, you need to text him and tell him whatever. Sext your husband that he's hot, you're you're hot, you're horny, <laughs> you're ready to go. Take your pants off. All the things. Put your CBD in your vagina. Have sex in the middle of the night. Lock yourself in the closet. All the things I told her. Apparently, she did it all. 
and I got flowers. First mm -hmm. time in 10 years I got flowers from a, from a patient's husband because she went home because her exact words to me when I said, how's your sex drive? She said, non-existent. I don't care if I have ever have it again. And I said, you better watch out. And their kids were grown. Their kids are teenagers now. So I said, they're getting ready to leave. And then what are you going to do with right. just the two of you there? Right. Right? Yeah, because that's a long period after your kids leave to when the end of your life. That's a long oh. period. <laughs> You like the guy, yeah, but you better do something about it. Or not. So, I'm gonna no. tell you right now divorce rates in Williamson County, and I'm sure it's all over the, the country and the world, are through the roof right now. I have two divorce attorneys as um, patients in here, multiple divorce attorneys actually, but the two that, I, that, are, that are here, they can't keep up. Oh Everyone oh is my. filing for divorce, many people right now, from February, March till now. Oh. And they are so booked out, they can't even see straight. That makes me sick. Yeah. Because guess what? You spent more time with your spouse than you have in years, maybe. And you all don't like each other. What is that? That's very, it's sad. And liking someone is a choice. Ah, uh, yes. It's a choice. Yes. And it's a commitment. Yes. You may love him, but not like him. I say that all the time to people, you know, and so we got to figure this out, you know, what's going to make you like him. Now, maybe it's a broken ordeal going on, and, you know, I mean, and there are those mm -hmm. situations, right? I was right. in something that even though I crossed the line and had an affair, I was in a, a emotionally and verbally abusive marriage, and I knew I had to get out, and I would have gotten out one way or the other. My, my thing to people is don't ever, don't, Cheat. Take the high road. Take the high road. If you're going to get out of the marriage, get out of the marriage. You know, um, if it's if it's just completely broken. But you know, we had one more thing that I, I was going to talk about, and we've talked about this: is taking care of your body as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you've had nine kids. You do not look like you've had nine children. We talked about this last night. Our body's a temple, and mm -hmm. many women, men too, though. There are men as well who let themselves go. Right. But what happens to, what was it, we had somebody tell us that in their culture, many times, we're told Allie this, that as soon as the first baby's born, it's sweatshirts and sweatpants and done. Wow. Could care less again. Yeah, it was a conversation I had uh, last week, and, and um, she just said something because I'm older than her. And she said, you know, your husband's lucky because you've really... You know, you've got good genes, is actually what she said to me. And I said, well, I do have good genes. I'm blessed with good health, but I don't have this body because of good genes. I have worked and worked and worked to stay a normal size because I have always wanted my husband to look across the room and say, I'd still pick you. That's my girl. Amen. I want that. I want to be 80 years old and him still to be captivated by me. And that does not come by default, people. You have to do something. But like Danny said, I have always believed that this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's what God says it is. That it is our job to take care of this. We would not let our church go in disrepair or not have the grass mown mm -hmm. at our church. We wouldn't let the sink leak and ruin the floor at our church, our place of worship. Why would we let things fall apart right here? That's not honoring to God. It's not honoring to our husbands. And honestly, it does not set a good example for your kids either. Yes, it doesn't set a good example. You, you want them to yeah. take care of them. Yeah, too. and they're going to face the same challenges. Exactly. You bet they are. You bet they are. So, I, I don't know. I just, I just think that... Divorce rates are on the rise. We needed to talk about this. You needed to hear from two people who have made marriages work, you know, and some of the old school, is there any other old school advice that you were given, that you wish you'd been given, or you were given, that you think is just amazing, that, you know, I mean, never say never, never say no, I mean, yeah. never say never either, you know, because, <laughs> um, or don't say, I mean, now there are exceptions to this, right? I mean, you're sick. You just had a baby. I mean, right. I mean, just don't, I mean, don't take that out of context, yes. all right? So there's, with, with common sense. That's right. Yeah. I mean, just to treat each other according to the golden rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish somebody had told me as a young woman 
that I don't have to look like a magazine for my husband mm. to think I'm beautiful. Oh gosh. Yes. I wish yes. somebody had said because I am short and I'm German build and you know I have muscles and I always thought I was fat. I was never fat, but I was heavier maybe than I maybe my BMI wasn't perfect or whatever. But I always felt fat because I did not look like a magazine. My husband does not give a rip. He thinks I'm beautiful, but I could not relax, especially naked. Mm -hmm. I could not relax with sex because I was so self-conscious. Like I felt so fat, like don't look at me. Make sure all the lights are out, close everything. You know, and that's so sad. He doesn't but care. He can walk right care. in this room right now and say, everybody out. And out, <laughs> lights are on, <laughs> windows are open. Men don't care. They just love you because you're you. And they, they do. That yes. means right. you're beautiful. Yes. They yes. love you. They picked you. Remember, mm -hmm. y'all picked each other and they still think you're beautiful. 10 pounds, 20 pounds, yes. whatever. Yes. Be comfortable in your skin. Because when I came to Danny, um, like I was having serious health issues and I didn't know why. And um, my husband's willing to pay the money so I can feel better. And of course now, what, five or six years yes. later, yes. I mean, I'm like lots of energy and 35 pounds lighter. and. There you yeah. go. But it takes work. This stuff yeah. just, just doesn't happen. Marriage doesn't just happen, right? Marriage mm -hmm. just doesn't stay good forever. And you don't stay in love the way you did when that baby mm -hmm. was born or the day you said, I do. I mean, it takes constant work every day choosing love, choosing love mm -hmm. to love your husband, to know that, you know, I, I and I know this stuff's old school. When I shared this um, probably five or six years ago on, on Facebook, I had someone post on there well that's like something from the 60s that's just old school what have you well yeah maybe it is but old school works i can tell you love a lot of respect yeah. you bet there is this woman mm -hmm. does not mince her words if you don't know dr laura schlesinger you are, are just <laughs> missing out because she gives it to women as well you know she gives yes. it to women she, she does tells not it exactly the way it is you bet she does and so you know that's the thing life's not perfect Clearly it's not. 2020 has been one big debacle for a lot of people. Many people did not take the last 20 plus weeks and really do something amazing with it, you know, and make some changes in their in their marriage and make some changes in their, their diet and, and things like that. But, you know, it's never too late. It's not too late. You know, as long as you still got a marriage and a husband and your kids and all that, you can choose love. And you can choose to respect your husband. You can choose to clean up. We talked about this. Yes. Clean the house. Yeah, what'd you say? Just, Just make sure your house is picked up when he comes home. So he knows that you're happy he's, like, coming home. So it seems like a refuge from all the stuff he's had to encounter all day long. He's, yes. Because he's probably not going to tell you all the things he had to encounter all day long. Because as a rule, men do not have diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> they do not share at all. He, you may tell him everything you've encountered from the every snot, sniffle, snort, and everything. But he's really not that interested in that. He's not. He, you know, and he, and he doesn't want to have to tell you everything he did. You're not going to know the stuff he went through to try to get home, you know, mm -hmm. to you and your kids. And I just, I just am so glad you guys have been here because you got 60 plus years, pretty much, 60 years of marriage right here and advice. And it's, it's incredible to me. And I just, I just want you guys to know if you're having a hard time, if you're struggling, really talk because I am telling you, nobody talks anymore. They're on their phone the entire time. So if he's going to be on his phone, you send him a little sexy text message. And how about a picture? My last page, no, my second to last patient today, she said, oh, my kids probably don't want to look at my phone very often. We always have to delete pictures because she said, I send him pictures in black and white. <laughs> and I send him pictures in the bathtub. Yeah, when's the last time you took a bath and sent a, your husband a picture of you in the bathtub, right? With your leg <laughs> hanging up the wall like this. I mean, why not? And if your kid's on the iPad and gets it, well, you know what? That's what they get. <laughs> Because mom and dad are having sex. In fact, we're going to do it tonight. And uh, maybe now while you're awake. Oh, my God. Uh, I can picture my 20-year-old uh, son being like, mother. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. We are sexual creatures. If you don't think you are a sexual creature, you need to read Song of Solomon. Woo! 
I grew up in a Tatumsville Baptist church. They never <laughs> once mentioned Solomon. It was never even Song of Solomon. It was not even. It was even a book in the Bible. <laughs> never even. I wish I'd have read that before I got married. I wish I'd have read that while I was married. Read that to your mm -hmm. husband. You can't help but love your husband more when right. you read that book right. in the Bible. Right. Amen. 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 All right, that's it. Okay. Um, we we love you guys. Sorry this took so long, but I'm just telling you, if you're struggling, man, get through it and talk, grow through it, love through it, and talk to your spouse. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you love. Tell them what you don't like. Tell them you love him. You know, and and get good food, good sex. Let him protect you. Don't be such a badass, right? I mean, really, really. Let him be a gentleman. They Let like him be a gentleman. Yeah, they actually like. They do. Be They're big old bears, beautiful teddy bears. They <laughs> just want to be protective, you know. Yeah. So, I just appreciate y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Danny. Absolutely. Well, it was it's fun. Enjoyable. It's worth it, y'all. It, it is, is worth it. It is. Keep growing through it. I love that. That's my favorite line of the of the week. Keep growing through it. Make a decision to just keep growing through it. Choose love every day. Yes.